Hello and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today I'll be showing you how to cycle from Dulwich in South London to Brockley, a relatively local journey. This ride takes less than 20 minutes and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. By public transport the same journey takes over half an hour and requires a change of bus or train so it makes a lot of sense to cycle this trip. If you find this video useful or you just enjoy watching it then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel as I try to post new videos just like it every week. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to contribute as well you can find a link in the description below the video. Alright let's get going. So we're starting in Dulwich Square which is a new pedestrian public space that was created by the closure of a few roads around this area. You may be able to tell from the markings that are still on the road that it used to be a busy road junction but now it's just a nice place to sit and have a coffee. Southwark Council is in the process of drawing up a final design for the space. That's not what it'll look like when it's completely done. It should get some fancy paving, some seating, maybe some greenery and some other stuff. It'll depend on the results of the consultation. One great benefit of closing the roads is also that this street that we're on, Court Lane, is now really quiet. As you can see, it's an absolute dream to cycle up. This wasn't always the case and traffic used to use it to run from Lordship Lane through to the junction that is now a pedestrian square. I think the scheme is a really good example of how improvements to public space can also go hand in hand with better conditions for cycling and walking and other active travel. What this has done is created a low traffic link from Dulwich Village where we started through to Lordship Lane which is really the other big town centre in Dulwich. We've now turned off Court Lane and we're on Anella Road which is a sign that you should be looking out for if you want to follow this route. As you can see plenty of people are getting around by bike here including kids and teenagers who I think really benefit from schemes like this. We're now coming up to Lordship Lane and the big red brick building just coming up on our right is the Dulwich Library which was built as a memorial to Edward Alleyne who was the founder of the famous public school Dulwich College. Very soon after we cross this junction we'll need to turn right into Etherow Street and you'll need to make sure that nothing's coming around that corner before you turn. The pavement here has been widened to provide more space outside of a school and I think that's great in principle although the location of a bus stand there does mean that the carriageway can be a little bit narrow and lead to situations like the one with that van which was fortunately really courteous to us although not everyone drives like that. Now we're on Freon Road and this is actually a great street for cycling. You'll notice that there's very little traffic here. In fact, those two cars that we pass at the beginning are really the only ones that we have to deal with for the entire road. That's because at one end there's what we call a modal filter, so we're able to cycle through it, but cars can't use this as a through route. This isn't part of a recent scheme, it's actually something that's been in there for a while. While this operates on similar principles to a low traffic neighbourhood, there is one crucial difference and that is that this filter only really affects and keeps quiet this street rather than a whole area. This junction is a good example of what that means in practice. There was a stream of traffic trying to cross the road and that SUV pulled out in front of us even though we had priority. A better scheme would try and remove through traffic from the whole wide area and keep it on main roads instead of channeling it through different back streets. The filter that keeps the street quiet is just here, by the way. It consists of some trees, a single bollard, and some signs saying no entry for motor vehicles. Now, we want to cross into the park that is Peckham Rye, and the way you do that is you go up on the shared pavement here, and you use the Toucan Crossing. This is like a pedestrian crossing, but you're also allowed to cycle over it. There are cycle symbols on it when those green lights are showing, but we crossed on the countdown timer, so they weren't visible there. Peckham Rye Common has a number of paths over it, and it can sometimes be confusing to know which way to go if you don't know it well. My rule of thumb here is just try and keep the iron fence on your right. You can see that there's street lighting in the park, although not huge amounts of it, and it is open 24 hours, so you should be able to use this route as, say, a winter commute when it's dark in the evening, which isn't the case for some parks. One change that could be made would be replacing this swing gate with some collapsible bollards, which would have the same effect, but be more permeable to people cycling. Currently, if it's closed, you kind of have to weave around it. 
Do remember that the paths in this park are shared with pedestrians and that they're not necessarily going to be expecting someone to be whizzing past on a bike. So don't ride too quickly and make sure you give everybody plenty of space. Just generally be cautious and courteous as you approach people as you don't want to scare anybody. For those of you who aren't sure about going through a park at night, just note that there are a number of street lights on the right along this side of the path as well. The place is generally reasonably lit and the paths are also quite wide. There aren't really any blind corners or anything like that along the route that we're taking. It's quite an open place, so I personally wouldn't feel too bad going along here. Although, of course, everyone has their different thresholds. There's a brief section on the north side of Peckham Rye here where the road can get slightly busier. Southwark Council is actually thinking about putting protected cycle lanes along here. If done right, that could be a great way of connecting the road into central Peckham. So I really hope that they get on and consult on some plans there, as it will definitely improve links into a popular part of town, which is currently underserved. Just on the right here, by the way, is the Ivy House, which is a really popular pub in this part of London. And rightly so, in my view. I've sat out the front there a few times with a beer, and I've admired just how low traffic Stuart Road is, and what a nice place it is for us to ride our bikes. It's always important for me to do first-hand research to bring you these videos. This next section of the route weaves through some back streets following an old London cycle network route called LCN 22. You can see there is some quite moderate wayfinding here. There's a couple of signs and things on the floor. It's kind of easy to get lost, but if you take your time, it should be relatively straightforward. Unfortunately, not all of the streets are as quiet as Stuart Road, and this section in particular is actually a little bit busy, especially at rush hour. It would be great to see some sort of intervention here. I think potentially a low traffic neighbourhood to remove traffic from this area. Especially as I think Transport for London has intentions to route a cycleway down here, Cycleway 35. It probably needs a little bit more work before that can be done. Southwark Council just this week unveiled its Streets for People plan and promised to come out with a traffic plan for the whole borough, so I hope that includes interventions to remove through traffic from this area. One other element of the Streets for People plan which was quite good is a promise to put controlled parking zones across the whole borough by 2024. And although we've just crossed into Lewisham, this is one area that could really benefit from it. You can see that there's quite a lot of on-street parking and there's no bays that they're restricted to. They can really just go anywhere. As a result, there is a lot of parking and the carriageway is quite narrow, which makes it difficult when another vehicle is coming in the opposite direction. As with that van, it was really a bit of a squeeze. So it would be good to see parking restricted to just one side of the road here, if you have to have any at all. We now just cut through this estate here and there's actually a nice bridge going over the railway which is the main line to Brighton out of Victoria. Do be courteous on the bridge as it is a little bit narrow and remember that pedestrians have got priority here. As we come off the bridge we'll turn left onto Howson Road and this street is actually effectively a mini low traffic neighbourhood thanks to uh, an old closure which is made further up ahead that prevents through traffic from using it as a rat run. I make this point quite a lot in videos and I like to point them out that LTNs aren't a particularly new thing, that filters like this one up ahead are really quite common. One thing that would be nice to see though is that filter redesigned. It's a similar issue to the one on Peckham Rye in that it's a gate rather than bollards and it does make it a little bit trickier to go through it. It could be replaced with a more modern design that had a little bit more space for things like cargo bikes and adapted cycles to get through. You could also incorporate a bit of greenery for pleasancy but also to deal with things like flooding as it can be good for drainage. And of course with the hot summers that we seem to be getting now there's always room for more trees and thus more shade which can really reduce the temperature in urban areas if done properly. As with the previous street, there is another white van here nicely demonstrating just how narrow things are when you have so much unrestricted parking. Now a little glimpse of what a future street could look like is actually here on Colgate Street. This is lovely and it used to be a through street but you can see it's been converted into a pedestrian area. It first happened during the pandemic and they decided to keep it and it's a great example of what more streets could look like in London if we have the political will to do it. 
So we're here in Broccoli. Thanks very much for watching that, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments of that route. If you make that journey regularly, I would be interested to see if you do it a different way or whether or not you think that's the way to do it. If you look at the map, it's actually pretty direct despite being the quietest route. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and turn on alerts. And big thanks again to those of you who contribute to the Patreon. Anyone else who wants to get involved can find a link in the description below the video. I'll see you again next time.